by now most people have heard the the term SMS, safety management systems. Uh, I've probably read articles, seen websites, uh, maybe even downloaded the International Helicopter Safety Team's toolkit, uh, or seen the companion video that HAI produced. Uh, today, though, we would like to uh, share some real life experiences uh, from some of your peers, real operators who have adopted SMS into their companies. We hope that you find this useful. Safety management systems play a major role in aviation safety from the shop to the hangar floor to the ramp and beyond. We're going to visit organizations of various sizes that have implemented SMS programs to eliminate any preconceived notions and ask some common questions that you may have. The first question that we're going to ask is, what prompted you to implement an SMS program and why? Uh, we, along with a lot of other people, are companies that haven't had accidents and incidents. So uh, a lot of people can say, well, what's my incentive to, to implement an SMS system and follow it up? I mean, the, the idea for me is it's, it's something that is stronger than the old system. We typically like very tangible solutions to our problems. You know, give, put a handrail here or give me a new piece of avionics that'll protect me from my own mistakes. Uh, it's all about new whiz-bang technology. That's what people like, that's what's fun. But the, the, the holy grail of safety performance and target zero and achieving target zero is through drastic culture change and driving a, a change in people's behavior. What it comes down to is, is you know, the old adage of hindsight is 2020 really rings true. After, after an incident or an accident, it's very easy to look back and see um, what may have led to that point, or at least it's easier to look back to figure out what may have, have led to that point um, dur during the investigation process. Uh, you know, that, that's being reactive, really. You're reacting to, to what took place. But um, the more effective but more difficult thing is to look ahead, to have foresight. What can we do right now to, to remove the potential to have that accident? It's what we call hazard identification. And a safety management system is, is really good at, at helping you do that. Um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of times after an accident, when, when we go back to look at it, or an incident, we go back to look at it and we find that, that, that someone somewhere in, in, in the organization was aware that that, that potential was there. Um, they knew that we may have had a, a problem with a particular piece of tow equipment or that a, a particular pilot may have had a... a a history of exhibiting, um, you know, at-risk behavior, but but they were unsure of how to get that information to the folks who had the ability to affect a positive change, to eliminate that hazard from the from the situation. A safety management system establishes a very clear avenue of how that information can make it to a point where it can make a, a positive difference. Once it's into the system, it's it's de-identified and we, we look at it from a system point of view rather than an individual point of view and how the system can be better improved and, and of course trying to uh, develop a culture that supports that takes time. In the beginning we weren't getting a lot of reporting um, and it seemed like the system didn't become really effective until more of the employees were reporting so you know, my advice would be to, you know, whatever it takes, whether it's um, the format of the reporting form or, or the procedure or the process, just make it easy for the people to get the information down and submitted. Um, help them to understand it's non-punitive. The blame culture is where when an accident takes place, um, uh, we, we find somebody to blame. And we say, well, you goofed that up you hit the road, you know. And by getting rid of the person, have we really addressed the underlying issue is what, is what created that? Possibly so, uh, but often not. Uh, we find that by not doing a good, thorough investigation, we still have a, an, itch, an issue that, that hasn't been addressed. And the, uh, the, the no blame or no fault is when, uh, um, 
you know, we just write it off as, oh, well, you know, you know what happens. Um, and we keep going on about our business. Again, we've not addressed it. Um, what we, we focus on is that um, when a person makes an, an, an honest, genuine mistake, um, then, then we need to look at how that took place, what allowed that person to be in a position to make, to make that mistake, and we're going to affect a change that's going to prevent anybody else from being in that position. But if we have a person who is, is breaking policy, breaking procedure, who has a history of exhibiting um, at risk or dangerous behavior, um, then we have the ability to hold that person accountable, um, and, and, and we do. We certainly do. Just culture is something that we've joked about a little bit. Yes, just culture means being fair to the company and the employee at the same time, um, whereas the old system, um, the old just culture, would be, yeah, we have a just culture, all right, you just had an accident, and you've just been fired. But that's not really what just culture is. Uh, just culture is being fair to both people at the same time with um, an outlined set of uh, criteria that, that shows each other's responsibilities. What I'd say to an organization who has a safe culture um, and, and says, well, I don't need a safety management system. We've been safe for a lot of years. You know, ask yourself the questions. Um, uh, how, how do my employees raise issues to, to the top? How do they get that information to uh, folks who have the ability to make the change? Um, if we have an incident or an accident, uh, what's the process for investigating that? How do we know we get to the root cause of, of what caused that incident or that accident? Um, when we're going to make a policy change, who's involved in that? Um, do we look at it just from, uh, if it's a maintenance policy we're changing, is the maintenance group the only one who, who has the ability to, to, to analyze that? Or, or do we bring in other dimensions of the, of the business um, and look at it from all sides? Uh, I think the only way to really accurately assess something is uh, get folks outside of the individual department affected involved. Um, everyone needs to look at it. When you make a policy change, how does that information get down to your employees? Um, uh, and, and, and the biggest thing is, is if you have a good, strong culture, and you've had it for a long time, um, you have many years worth of knowledge wrapped up in that culture and, and the way you're going to do things. Um, when you add a new person to your operation, how is that person so, supposed to obtain all those years of knowledge if it's not written down or documented somewhere? Have you tracked the costs of implementing your SMS program, and what were they? It can be done very easily and quickly just by uh, writing down a few key items and talking with a few key people on, on where you're starting and where you want to go. And so you can spend as little or as, as great amount of time uh, as you can imagine. I can't um, think of the man hours that we've put into it, but it's, it's been significant and the cost uh, the same. However, I, I look at it this way. I, I reinvest the benefits that I get out of operating this business, and that benefit comes from uh, not having to use my deductibles on my insurance premiums each year. Um, a lot of things like that that I feel that I can invest that money into time and management of people and resources so that we don't ever have to use that, hopefully. Yes, it's a cost in time and a cost uh, with a dollar value to it, but again, it's just a, an investment and a return on investment in the end. All we're doing now is we're looking at our company, we're coming up with an overarching manual that covers safety, and it's very small, it, uh, open for 20 to 30 pages, that basically is a roadmap of how we're going to manage our safety, and then we have a procedures manual underneath that. For us, it's been easy because we've always had the procedures manual, but it covers everything from fuel spills to vehicle accidents, how to drive our vehicles, what we expect, how to, our emergency response plans are part of that. And the safety management system basically is the center of a spider web to connect it all together. So for someone who has some type of safety program, implementing safety management is basically just adding another layer to it and involving employees. We don't see that it's a great cost factor. There is some time factor involved, um, and that is coming from our quality assurance department, our maintenance department, our management department, and um, from everyone. Um, 
basically that personnel was already in place and it's just now part of their current uh, employment function so we haven't seen a huge cost either. You know from my perspective uh, as a director of maintenance it hasn't really been a lot of extra workload for me. Um, you know I have to respond to safety reports that come in that are maintenance related but you know I would anyway right if there's if there's any any sort of uh, problems in the field I mean I'd have to re respond to them whether there's an SMS program in place or not but I think now um, uh, now that the system's in place even though it took a little while to get up and running I mean all that runs a lot easier. Most helicopter companies and I, and I can vouch for those ones in Canada basically in the air taxi uh, uh, part of things like we are had already had a lot of this in place uh, everything from uh, from incident reporting to uh, to quality assurance programs and to uh, non-punitive uh, reporting, things like that, emergency response plans. Just about every company already had some form of those uh, things in place. And really it is uh, just a change in documentation. Uh, those things just become much more detailed in the documentation and that's really the biggest change uh, going from what we had before to a fully implemented SMS system. What did you do to get your employees to support the SMS program? Actually, they were already, in our opinion, and theirs already bought into it. Um, everybody wants to come home at night, and so to make the company as safe as it can be has always been everybody's first priority, right from the, uh, you know, the maintenance staff, uh, the, the building maintenance staff, right through to myself, the president. And so in that respect, we didn't really have to get any buy-in. Where we did have some wrinkles, as I'll put them, is more concern over that it was going to be very complex and that there'd be a lot of requirements, uh, more requirements than we have now of people to do. And we haven't found that to be the case. We've always documented our incidents. We've always had a safety program uh, in place in our operations manual. And we've had to tweak it but um, we haven't seen that to be a big issue. But basically everybody has bought into the safety culture for so many years based on the type of work that we do that uh, we haven't seen any issue with that at all. You know, it can be originally construed as something negative. Um, you know, especially uh, some of our, you know, some personnel that have been in the industry a long time and they've gone 20 years in this business without having an SMS program. Um, it seems like like the newer people that come along seem to embrace it a little bit more readily. Um, it's, it, it, it has been gradual, it's not like we turned on a switch and it, and it just happened, but um, uh, people seem to embrace it because, you know, it, it, it was implemented gradually and, and people start to see the positive in it. I think originally it was viewed as just another safety initiative that uh, um, latest thing, greatest, uh, latest and greatest, the thing of the month. Um, but but once the the system is introduced, and especially if it's introduced properly, um, what, what you end up with is uh, employees start to realize that that this is empowering for them. It gives them the ability to have a say in what goes on uh, around them daily, um, and, and it builds a sense of ownership in the end um, when someone has the ability to to make a change in their environment or at least. Uh, uh, propose a change in their environment, then, then that develops a good strong sense of ownership. Since starting your SMS program, what benefits have you recognized? And are they what you expected? Word seemed to get out there beyond us ever advertising the fact that we had an SMS system and it was in place and functioning. And I guess one of the big benefits is that we've had uh, two sectors of the industry that we had not been servicing in the past that uh, were looking for uh, someone that had a developed SMS system that uh, knew what SMS was about and what risk management was about and from each of these sectors uh, we were approached to provide helicopter services for them based on the fact that uh, they had heard and, and recognized Skyline as one of those companies that, that had that benefit. When you put a stop sign up at a intersection, how many lives, do you ever really know how many lives you saved? No. When you implement a safety management system, will you ever know how many lives you saved? Probably not. You can't statistically count it. You can only look at the past and the future, and you can look at operators that fly under very high risk level, 
and those that don't look at their safety records. And then there's those that fly under a very high risk level and get away with it year in and year out. But one of these days, one of these days, it'll catch, catch up with them. A lot of things that happen um, maybe throughout a busy operational season. Um, if, you know, if, if there was a little incident or something was damaged or something went wrong, you know, with, without the SMS system, it wouldn't get reported. We may hear about it, but we may not actually act on it. It might just be one of those, oh, it's an isolated incident. Um, good thing nothing serious went wrong. Uh, and, and, it, and it ends there. But if you have an SMS system in place, it gets documented. And um, when you're you know, finished with your busy operational season, you can sit down and look at all your incident reports. And uh, you know, maybe, maybe you see a pattern. Maybe there's several things that, that have happened that it all have one, the same root cause. Maybe it's training. But um, having the system in place, uh, you know, allows you to, uh, to capture those things that maybe you wouldn't have taken seriously without the system. Whether we do something right or wrong, if we all go at it together, we make it easier to fix if there is a problem. Instead of a few people going one way and a few the other way, uh, we've really learned to be consistent in what we do here and we try to make uh, everything as much the same as possible. Uh, consistency is a huge benefit in a company. What advice would you give other leaders who are exploring the possibility of implementing an SMS program? My background is uh, I spent 32 years in the offshore drilling business and I remember working in the North Sea in the early 70s when I started my career living in Aberdeen, Scotland where I don't even remember having a safety meeting. I don't remember a whole lot of discussion about safety. And I would assume, I would guess that if we kept the records, our, our recordable incident rate per 200,000 man hours was out of sight. Uh, probably 150 recordable incidents per 200,000 man hours, followed by uh, a very high incidence of lost work cases and a, and a, a very high incidence of fatalities through culture change and safety, implementing safety management systems, I've seen the incident rate go from the levels I just described down to 0 0.2. So if you can think about a recordable rate of 120 to 150, which is a guess, it could have been higher, maybe a little bit less, but all the way down to 0 0.2, you then understand the benefit and the effect that a good safety management system can have on changing culture and achieving target zero. It's something that, uh, you know, some people see as the, uh, the new trendy thing to do. Everybody's getting on board with SMS. But again, if it's something you're getting on board with uh, because a customer is demanding it of you or the regulator is demanding it of you, um, you're really not going to see much value out of it. And you're, I, frankly, I think you're wasting your time to even get involved with it. But if you are looking for change or looking to develop and uh, looking for uh, positive results in the future, I think SMS is the way to go. It really is system management in safety. In, in this day and age, any one accident could take out a helicopter company, no matter how large you are. Just depress the, pub, the publicity, um, the, the loss of reputation, the loss of assets, the loss of working capital, they can all remove a company from the face of the industry quickly. So it's essential to have an active system and it's essential that the people who work here realize that, that all our livelihoods are based on the success of our company. The SMS is something that's here to stay. Okay, there's no way around that, so we've tried to take it on by the horns. And my advice to people that are uh, going, to, going to get involved with SMS are to start thinking in terms of SMS. Uh, there is a difference from the way you do things now. You have to start thinking about things like risk assessment. Uh, if you go out to buy a new modification for your helicopter, do you need to do a risk assessment? Or how are you going to use that uh, piece of machine, machinery or that component? You need to do a risk assessment. We've always felt that safety makes good business sense. Um, if we're not safe, we're not attracting customers. And if we're not attracting customers, we're not earning revenue, which then we can put back into the system to uh, enhance our safety programs through aircraft modifications, training programs for uh, employees and that type of thing. What can happen with a program if you believe in it, if you want it to work, if you're committed to it working, then it will be whatever you put into it. If you think it is haphazard, a waste of money and a waste of time, 
it's going to be self-fulfilling. You know, aviation people are hesitant to do something that isn't necessarily required, but you know, in this case, if you can if you can make that initial investment, albeit it's probably a small one, I mean, down the road you would uh, be uh, quite satisfied with your program. Um, I, my advice would be is, you know, don't think twice about it. Just just do it. You don't have to bite it all off in, in one chunk. It can be developed gradually. That's how we've done it, and it's worked well for us. If, if I'm to think that we're successful with SMS, it's that we've put systems in place, we've got a culture that people believe in, and uh, when we can go home all to see our families at the end of the day, that's, that's the ultimate reward. One of the biggest challenges to an SMS system is the creation of a reporting tool. This can be a daunting task. Uh, do you get hire a team of programmers? Do you need to run a server farm? Um, do you hire consultants? Uh, it, it can be a, a bit overwhelming. This is where HAI comes into play. We've created www.eventreporting.org. It's a full functional, robust incident reporting and trend analysis tool. It's available free of charge to all our members. Um, it's available online. It's been uh, thoroughly field tested. Uh, we're actually on revision two right now. And remember, the event reporting program is your company's program. Only your login has access to the information. It's on our HAI secure server. And HAI is always only a phone call away and ready to help. So log in and give event reporting a try today. Thank you for taking the time to view our video. As you have seen, SMS programs that are properly implemented with your employees' involvement will be a great benefit to your organization. If you have any further questions, please contact any member of the HEI Technical Committee. As the industry gets safer, we're all going to benefit from that through more work, uh, less regulation, um, lower insurance rates, and that type of thing. So I think everybody can benefit from some type of formality. It doesn't matter whether you're rotary wing or fixed wing or air medical or oil and gas. If you don't fly safely or you're not perceived to be a safe operator, you're out of business. In terms of trying to change our culture, it's important to understand where our culture is at. There is a quote that says you can't manage what you can't measure. Any program that you try and introduce, whether it's a safety program, a flight training program, an accounting program, is doomed to failure uh, without the culture to support it.